Well, here I am with uh, Southern Avenue, and believe it or not, they've made it to Sacramento, and here they are in the headquarters of Rico's Blues News, our, our uh, secret lair that I cannot divulge the location of, or I would have to kill you. <laughs> Shalom! <laughs> So, uh, wow, so much has happened uh, since the last time we talked and did this. Um, could you guys each introduce yourselves? I'm Tierney. I'm Ori. I'm TK. I'm, I'm Ava. Ava. I'm Jeremy. It's got to be an order for it. <laughs> All right. No. Oh, I, I'm blocking Ava now. <laughs> so, and sleeping Ava. Yes, and Nava. And today you guys are playing at the Farm to Fork festival yes in beautiful sacramento oh, exactly. so in the last uh in the last year what's the most exciting thing that's happened with the band we got nominated for a grammy i mean last year. Oh, last i know year. that's, that's not within the last okay no. okay so when, when did you get nominated for a grammy we got nominated for a grammy in the year 2020 for a best contemporary blues album what that's year awesome. are we now this right, is 2022. Right, yeah. I know it's two years later, but, <laughs> okay. but no, okay. no, we, we toured with Cheryl Crow this year, and I think that was awesome. That was is exciting. awesome, man. I love Cheryl Crow. That Crowell. was exciting. Yeah, yeah she's very yeah. nice. Did you guys got along well together? It was of a good course. blend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was very fun. They wanted to do more. We all wanted to like do more shows together, but hopefully we'll be able to link back up with them again. So. Okay, okay. Who else have you toured with in the last year or two? Jason Moraz. Jason Moraz was last summer, yeah, when I was okay. pregnant with her. So she oh, Jason Moraz. Wow, that's a really that's interesting a, combination. Well, we wrote yeah, a song yeah. with him uh, on our last album, and um, he invited us to tour. So That's incredible. We, you know, this this year is still bouncing back from uh, the COVID it is. Of, like, times, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we're still doing shows that were booked. This year we did shows that were booked in 2019. Oh wow! You know what I mean? Like yeah, you know, right. a year before you book a show for next year, right. it doesn't happen, and then you try again, it doesn't happen. You try again, it doesn't happen. So it's still a year where we're yeah, yeah we know about that. Yeah, so you are. need music. You do yeah. need music, <laughs> and music. you know, even being up here, and there's actually, believe it or not, there's sort of a thriving blues scene in the Northern California area, the two, and that kind of brings me to the next question, and that is, I think the blues is an evolutionary process that can go in a number of different directions. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I definitely believe that the blues is the foundation for so many other, you know, musical journeys and genres that it should be honored in a way where it's performed in different, um, where it's presented in a different light. And I think that that's, it shows appreciation of, you know, music, of roots, and you get it out there to different people, to different yeah. ears. Exactly. And that's important. And those people that just like to, you know, the purists, they fell in love with the blues during a certain era, and I understand and respect that. Mm -hmm. I, think, yeah. I think of it as a way that uh, um, a genre is being created, and it, you call it contemporary, and then within a, a time frame, it becomes, maybe she want this, and then with time, it becomes traditional. And then... You say you classical, you have like classical, like a classical, a contemporary, you have so many, you have uh, traditional blues and you have contemporary blues, and then you have, every genre have the, 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 the people who disrupt, so to speak, and do something new with them, and then, so uh, I think traditional blues is what traditional blues is, is the roots, is, is the first 20, 30 years of the creation right. of the genre, and that's it, so you, you know, so... <laughs> Musical backgrounds. What's your musical background? My musical background is really um, gospel music. And I, I mean, I kind of grew up in the church, but in Memphis. So I was around everything, like, from, it's like what people consider the soundtrack. Like, Al Green, for example, is at every wedding, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I've been around sort of this essence of music within my own family as well. Like, I come from a lot of musicians. And so I was raised primarily around gospel music. Okay. But gospel music itself has so many different influences. Well, what you think? Personally, I think gospel, blues, and jazz are all kissing cousins. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, pretty much. Basically. It's like all the same, honestly. And the, I mean, the R&B, the I guess you could say, is what I identify most with. Okay. Um, I just love 
for those of you who don't know, R and B stands for rhythm and blues. blues. <laughs> yeah, rhythm and blues. Yeah, I'm the rhythm. What's up? Blues. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but in general, in general, I, I feel like <laughs> all the music, I love all different types of music. So for me, it all comes out in different ways depending on the situation. But like. You can never just be a solid, like, backbeat, you know what I'm saying? It's like there's so much emotion within storytelling Yes. that it's, it's like while the drums definitely play a big part of determining the the genre of, a music, of the music, I feel like the drums also just as much share emotion in the, the essence of the blues as the guitar or the piano or, like, because in the beginning it was just a guitar and the blues. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that's all you had. So the guitar right. was the percussion, the guitar was the melody. The, so it's like, right. it just evolved, but, you know, it's not anything different other than where I came into place, which is, like, my time frame. So I have way more between that first era and the present time, but I'm still immer immersed in all of it at one time, if that makes sense. It does, and you make a good point because... To go back to the purest blues, when they first started out, the, the guitar player not only did the percussion, he did the bass, he did the rhythm, he did the lead, or she, as the case may be, and did the vocals as well. So, covered everything. I, I would agree completely. Yeah. No, no. Well, we're all related, so okay. yeah. we grew up playing music in the church. We grew up in the church. I mean, individually, we probably each had our artists that we snuck and listened to. But ultimately, yeah, yeah. ultimately, the reason we play music is because we were in church every day that my parents could have us there, and okay. there were musicians in the church. Oh, okay. So, in order to not be bored to death, we became yeah. musicians. Okay. And we sang in the choir, and we played instruments, and, and, and now we're free. Who did you sneak and listen to that your parents didn't want you to listen to? I okay. So my first artist, the first artist was Michael Jackson, and oh. then there was, uh, and then Mariah Carey, which she was, she was more, she did a lot of inspirational songs throughout that time. But she Mozart. did. And then um, Aretha Franklin, and then at some point I fell in love with Billie Holiday. Oh. And then I got, then I became a jazz lover just okay. from like, listening to Billie Holiday, and then I went into that whole world. But um. Yeah, Al Green was one. I loved Al Green. I felt like I was singing. So I are these the, the artists that your parents didn't want you to listen yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then, okay. and then Beyonce they were in strict. high school. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really strict. Yeah. yeah. I remember um, sneaking and listening to, of course, Michael Jackson on her. Um, iPods. Yeah, one of y'all's iPods. Yeah, the iPods. Yeah. And I loved, um, just like, I listened to the Jackson 5 album. Um, over mm -hmm. and over again, and yeah. Oh, and Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. Oh, Earth, uh, Serpentine Fire, <laughs> favorite song right okay. now. My and uncle used would let me that. steal uh, sneak CDs from because he was a musician too. Oh, okay. So, that, that so he cool. understood the mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So he would let me sneak CDs, and it was um, I had this like four. Four I think it's four discs. Stevie Wonder. Now you yeah. know it. And, and um, some Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> so, Jeremy, what's your musical background? Uh, gospel, blues, and funk. Gospel, blues, and funk. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm the keyboard player. You're the keyboard player. Keyboard player. Right. Okay. And you're the bass player. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All player? right. Yeah. Okay. So, what's your musical background? Uh, my dad is a jazz musician, so I kind of came up in that kind of tradition. And then I studied classical music, classical technique on the bass. Okay. And then uh, I kind of live in like a rock and roll city. So where do you live? Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. So a lot of songs, a lot of Latin music. Um, yeah. Cool. It sounds like a, a lot of blues. Yeah, you know, a really multifaceted uh, batch I've, of influences. I've kind of, yeah, I have. Uh, I've kind of spent time in a, a lot of different uh, genres. Okay. Yeah. How'd you meet these guys? They're our in Memphis, buddy, you're uh, in Atlanta. Our buddy, uh, Luther Dickinson, yeah. who kind of looks out for the band, being from North Mississippi in Memphis. He's like our fairy godmother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 He has this like cosmic sense of timing, putting the right people like at the right time, in the right places. Yeah. Okay. And I met him just from being on tour with someone else, and he kind of remembered me when they were talking to him about bass players. 
Okay. Yeah. And yeah. It was match made. And it clicked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Worked. And we still do tours with the All Stars and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And yours? Me, uh, the synagogue. <laughs> <Every day. laughs> the, from the Klezmer at the synagogue, everything I know is. Uh, I love Klezmer know. music. I, uh, <laughs> I, it, it's it's funky. It is totally funky. Um, no, I I'm listening to my dad's records. And he had what what kind? He of had records? everything. A lot of jazz, a lot of blues, a lot of um, best of. Uh, like chess, you had like the best of chess over the years. Oh wow! A CD for every like decade and. Uh, stacks, and then he had um, uh, uh, for any genre, you know, impulse jazz uh, record, impulse, and and uh, uh, yeah. So that's what I grew up listening to records and tape and tapes and vinyls and CDs, and um, and then I that's kind of my uh, upbringing. Oh, I, only at the age of thirteen, I found another friend, another kid that actually listened to the same music. Until then, I was kind of in my own world. Okay. You know. So, <clears throat> how do you know when a group of musicians clicks? How did you guys know that we didn't this was the right <laughs> group of people to it's be It's pretty with? obvious when someone's not right in the group. Because yeah. we're all so, we all just, we, we get along so well. So it doesn't take long. I, I can answer for her. Okay. Because apparently <laughs> Nava doesn't want to talk <laughs> Like, no, it takes time. I hired Tierney originally um, to be the singer of my band, and the interview, meaning like the first time I, we met to talk about business, we, we felt fine and good, and then we did shows um, with TK playing drums, and it felt fine, and then you kind of, uh, you just go through things, you know? So yeah, so you just, friends you've been with uh, around time for years, it takes years to build that kind of relationship, because everything is being extreme, uh, taking to the extreme on the road. You right. put in circumstances where normal people, normal friends should not be in. You know, like you don't live with your friends, you don't, you don't uh, uh, spend so much time with your friends, you don't, you do, as a band on tour, you just do a lot more than, so... You kind of, over time, you realize quickly if this is something, somebody you want to work with for a long time or not. So there's a honeymoon phase yeah. with anybody you hire or you work with, but then, like, once something happens, bad, you see the real character. Right. And then you're like, okay, is, 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 is this, is he happy? Is she happy? Am I, like, if everybody's happy, then it keeps going. Really, like any, like, uh, friendship, you keep judging yourself over time and improve your friendship and, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You, so, in the period of time that you guys have been together, what's changed from day one to today? Well, Other we, than the, the obvious. I mean, you're signed to Stax Records, you're, you know, you, uh, you're on tour. You, I, listen, let me tell you what's changed. Okay, tell me. Everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because when we first started out, it was the four of us, we were younger, it was like seven, eight years ago. Seven or eight years ago, right? And I was, I was coming out of college. Ori had also been in America for a minute, but it's like, now we are all actually, like, they're married, they, there's a baby, you know what I'm saying? Like, that changes everything. That's yeah. Much, <laughs> uh, you know? But no, we also, we added Ava as a background singer, and the funny thing about it is that she had already been, she had sang on all the records, she's, not, yeah. you oh. know, she's already been a part of the creative process, okay. so I feel like what's changed is that it's just the time, it's like we've all been invested in this for so long, and like pushed, in, like we've all been pushing, you know what I'm saying, in terms of, it's like you wake up, you got something to do, you know, like this is what needs to get done, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like with us, everybody kind of has the collective um, get-go in, okay. in terms of like wanting to see this through and wanting to see this prosper. And so it's like when Ava came along, everybody kind of came along. It was very divine in a way because with Evan... Wait, we but, were, but also it's not like it's uh, it's not like uh, Evan was the first. You know, we had five bass players. Oh, yeah. You know, like uh, each one of them, we hoped that that was going to be the guy that will be a happy with what we. You know what I mean? That will have that everything will work well. And but if Evan, we would meet him two years before, it would we wouldn't be ready because. Um, we can't afford what he's asking for because he's a seasoned musician. We were making, I was barely making, uh -oh. no, I was barely, he knows, I yeah. was barely, we were barely, we just started the band. We were 
invested. We didn't get paid like for a whole long hour. You know what I mean? It was just like, it, it's like we needed to be ready for him. He needed to be ready for us. Ava was too young to join the band. So it's not like everybody kind of like, you know, it takes time. Everything kind of falls in the right place. And then like, it's time. Like he was doing what he didn't, he wouldn't want to leave what he was doing at the time to, you know, right. just everything kind of, like he said, Luther had this, we were ready to uh, to kind of find a base pair, long term solution for a base pair, and and we, we thank God, you know. Yeah. So the band is like I said, I'm, it started with like me, Tierney, and TK, and then Jer, and then Jeremy, and then like we took time to like find Evan and Ava to be ready, you know, with like a yeah, she just got the universe to align. So it takes time, but we're not done, you know. We we we're gonna we we. We record with horns a lot, you know. We want to. We'll, you want to take horns on the, the road core, with you? Of course, you know this is the core. But yeah. in terms of, it's like yeah, there's just a lot of cool stuff that we we want to do. So it's not like, uh, you know. So when I listen to you guys, I, I I always use this as an example when I talk to any band because I've managed a few bands. It's like that scene in uh, the Blues Brothers where John Belushi goes, "The band," you know, <laughs> "It's it's the band, man," and that <laughs> mentality is really hard to pull together. Especially, and you guys are young enough where it's a lot easier. A lot of blues musicians are older, and it's like, ah, yeah, I just want to get paid. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do the gig. I don't want to contribute to the arrangements. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And, to me, that kind of you lose the essence of what the music is all about with that. Yeah, I mean, we came. You see, I'm I'm not like I'm from Israel, and I I'm not spending. I don't have family here other than than the band, and I'm not gonna. Spend and your wife and time. child, of course. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. and, uh, you know, the band. So it's yeah. like I'm not gonna be here unless I'm working and trying to like uh, um, spread the the gospel of my music, so to speak. So, and I think that everybody is on the same, you know. It's like we all have a goal. We're all trying to do something. And I think that's the, the ultimate thing because every one of the bass players we played with before, their ultimate goal wasn't what kind of our ultimate goal, if that makes any sense. Any musicians that I work with in my life, the reason I'm not with them until today is because like at the end of the day, you know, the, the end goal is not as much. Like we, I think our end goal, I don't want to get because it's a deep conversation, but the bottom line, we all care about legacy. Southern Avenue is like Memphis, you know, we, we were by God signed to Stax. We were we have something special. We have something special. We have a legacy that we're we're we God put us where we are and we need to like understand why and keep doing this. So it's like but we, we have a legacy to maintain that and, and something to create. And kind of that's and, but not everybody's into that. Some musicians don't really care about what they they just like you said, want to get paid or wanna do some people don't really care what they leave behind. Right. There's plenty of hired guns and, out there. And we are all original. Like, all I care about, and Tyranny and TK, we all care about creating and not necessarily repeating, not necessarily like just, we just want to create. And we don't really care what genre it is. We don't really, don't, we're not a blues band. We're not, we just like blues. And, you know, Tyranny, does, Tyranny sings blues in whatever she sings. Right. Um, it's just so bluesy because where she came from. And the same with TK, it's like she, the way she plays is just very, very like R and B, like blue. Like, like, that's, that's, that's where she grew, you know. So it's like I think that's just who we are. So the, we don't play really blues. The blues okay. is in us. Is in the music we write. Okay. Um, you know. So. And that pretty much answers my next question: Is how would you characterize the genre of the band? And you know, I, I respect that because I think once you pigeonhole yourself as we're a rock and roll band, or we're heavy metal, or we're blues, or we're this, or we're that. Yeah. You're kind of stuck in that spot, you know? No, we, to we, break yeah. out of that is really, really difficult. If you yeah. are much more amorphous and much more able to go in a variety of different directions, it gives you a lot more freedom and a lot more the latitude. The hardest thing to do was when, uh, on the second record, um, the Gravy Nine did one, uh, the label asked us how to... Uh, to name the like the, the, the promo, so they they the genre. So they wanted to say retro soul, hmm. and okay. I was like, oh, I hated it because it's so forced. It feels forced. Yeah. Like retro soul. What does that mean? What am I looking for right now? So 
it's just I don't I I really yeah it's hard to do and Spotify like they don't know how to categorize this as well right I don't really know I just like I just think that we should all just write the best songs we can and I don't care what genre it is you okay. know what I mean over time over 30 40 years span this band should have like every, like so many records and so many genres and things that we just you know, like whatever we want to do we do it's not necessarily all the genres you see what I'm saying it's not whatever it is that we choose to do we do it's not like we are uh this or this or that or that. <laughs> Who composes the songs? Um, we say all of us. I don't know. I would say all of us. It just uh, oh, tyranny. Now, will now, always there's be a the difference memory. between composing and arranging. So. Who writes the Who writes the lyrics? Who writes the music? And then I'm going to guess that the entire band contributes to the arrangement. Somebody mm -hmm. brings a song and says, "Hey, I got a song," and you may say, "Well, you know what? I think we should do this." And you may say, "How about this bass line?" Or, yeah. you know, this riff would sound really good in here. Yeah, you know, Ben's. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it works. Uh, Tierney will always be the leader of it. She sings it. She fronts it. And. It doesn't matter what I write or Tiki writes or Evan or Jeremy or Ava. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, um, she needs to front it. So it's like she's definitely the main uh, songwriter in that terms. Okay. And then like, uh, you know, me, TK, it's been mainly me and Tierney on a lot of stuff, but it's really, it really depends. I look at the history. The first record was like a lot of uh, um, early Southern Avenue bluesy stuff and then stuff that we just met eight months before. <laughs> you know, she was still not, still not 20. So it's like, then we evolved the second record. Me and, me and TK wrote a song uh, uh, with, um, I don't know, I can't believe I forgot his name. It's okay, my short term memory. George. No, that was mm -hmm. the third one. No, um, uh, with William Bell. Bruce. William Bell. We wrote a song with William Bell from Stax. Um, and then on the last record, um, I think what Evan has two that we wrote together, uh, uh, Push Now and then DK also, three or four. It's really like, it's more always to it's me. It's like the least, evolution of the, ba of the band. In a yeah. Way. It's like, as we've evolved, it's, it's kind of come out like through the music as well. It's like, yeah, everybody's involved in the creative process of getting the song together but then when you're talking about like the originating of like ideas and stuff it's like evolving with the group because it's like everybody comes from such a different angle so depending on how you approach a song it really determines like for us because we're so early it really like gives us a heavier identity in a way mm -hmm. than if we were like 40 years in and we were like you know uh, deciding like to put together a record and we could put together like all these different things but it's like honestly come together feeling around what works feeling out like how does this like how do we vibe together how do we emotionally intercept I guess you can say that's a I'm very confused right now no I'm just saying like Sorry. the evolution of I like uh, of the writing and just like the yeah. progressing of like the music because I sing as well. <laughs> no, but we also have a third <laughs> harmony in there. So it's like now, it's like <laughs> she's always singing on the records. Uh -huh. But at this point, we don't write from from a record perspective. We write from what are we able to like do in this room like with each other. Because like now, everybody's a part of like the puzzle and not necessarily a work for hire or just like a... Yeah. Uh, but everything at the end of the day will always be centered around Tyranny because she's like... Um, she fronts it. She sings it. So, like, uh, so the like, sound is definitely centered around, kind of built around Tierney's voice. Okay. Because it's like a strong voice and her lyrics, but she also has like a lot of musical ideas like in her head. Mm -hmm. So like she'll have an idea and sing it, and you're like, okay, that's gonna be the bass line because like or drum. She'll, yeah, she'll have like ideas no. that like you kind of go off of because yeah. you already know it's gonna be best. Mm -hmm fitting with her singing. Yeah, she has it together. Lyrics come with melody. She's, she's just, she's obviously like amazingly talented, but at the end of the day, we're all amazingly talented. Yeah, But absolutely. we don't front the band. So like, at the end of the day, like, I come with an amazing song that I really care about, but if, but sometimes she will be like, yeah, but I, I don't really like, like it. I think a lot of the songs that I've written my parts on, it's like, she'll have like kind of the main bass theme mm -hmm. and like sing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll kind of go from there. Like, don't hesitate. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's 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 really, yeah, you know. So the writing is definitely centered around her and just what kind of works. But also we had... Not always. Yeah, I mean, not always. Like, no. but, but like 80% yeah. of the time, at least. Yeah. 
least, yeah, every time I write something, I end up giving it to her, unless it's instrumental, you know. She, okay. she ends up, like, touching it. Or, There's been a few yeah. where, like, we've come up with, like, a groove or, like, a riff, and then she adds hers mm -hmm. after. Yeah. So no definite set no yeah. model for doing it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. No, yeah, we, we're not that. like a... No, because, you see, that's the thing, is that when we met... We met on the group. Me and Tyranny met we, uh, to write together and work to re create original music. And TK Joy in the band, she was always encouraged to, to, to write and to contribute to whatever she can. That's good. And then uh, who joined? Whoever joined the, the group long term, please contribute and do whatever you can. Again, the well, band, man. Yeah, That's what, what makes want? it the band. <laughs> like, yeah, what do you want? Like, no rules, no. I am the... What is it? It's right. bullshit. It's it's so egotistic. It's like whatever. But at the end of the day, we need to see and see what fits an album. What? Yeah, yeah. of course, there's gonna be editing. But le and let me tell you that a song that wasn't working three albums ago might come back on the fifth and become Hotel California. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like, I do. So if I wouldn't encourage each one, me I'm saying is some, in my position. If we wouldn't be encouraged to write something even if we wouldn't use it for years we might use it four years later right and it'll become something if i didn't if we were encouraged to to write because tyranny only sings so you know what i mean let me ask yeah. you this the of all the songs that you've written and all the times you've played is it exactly the same thing every time you get on stage or is there is it a little bit different each time yeah a little bit different every time i'm with you no we're jam we we are i mean yeah it's just boring to do the same show over and over and over again. I totally we, we agree. Are, yeah, I mean, I would, yeah, I would write songs. Let's say nobody would make me write songs. I would write them because I can't, be, you know, I would just write because it's like, I can't be doing these songs again. I think, I feel like this band, we do strive pretty hard to like, to have the arrangements be like, we know what we're going to do. And like, you know, each show, like we kind of have it, we have like our show kind of together. Mm-hmm. But, like, despite our best efforts, I think our musicianship kind of creeps in. And then, like, when we're in the middle of something, it likes, like, it'll change. Just kind of. Yeah. Good. I love that. Together. That's. Yeah. No, it won't be the same BPM. It would be one less, two yeah, more, yeah. two less. It will be, I will do a lick that doesn't exist. Right. Sometimes it might be somebody edit something that some of us wouldn't like. Sometimes it will be something we really like. Um, but, yeah, but it, but it's, it's. Um, I think... Uh, such a I don't want I don't want to be in an environment Sounds where we're room. just no 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 all the time you know what I mean that's the thing it's like oh I can't do that oh I can't do that oh I can't mm -hmm. like uh, we still need to play the song because like the song we worked so hard to write a good song and arrange it and record it and have it played a certain way why do it worse right of course. so yeah. that's a yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Why do yeah. it worse? But yeah, I can't do it the same. If you if you would come to both of our shows, yeah. you would see and you push now being played differently, a bit different, and you know, like. Uh, so yeah. Well, that's great. Well, guys, I want to thank you so very much for uh, sharing a few moments of your time with me. I really, really appreciate thank it. You, Tyranny thank too. You for too. Tyranny <laughs> too. Absolutely, and Nava, of course. Yeah, uh, Nava. We got her on a sleepy time. That's yeah. It. She's still yelling at us. <laughs> I get it. Believe me, I get it. I've been through it a number of times. <laughs> All right. I cool. understand. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah.